person was a Pulitzer Prize winning author and a single mother. That meant it was all on her to provide, to love, and to lead her family. You might think that would be overwhelming, which surely at times it was, but Morrison managed to succeed not just as a parent, but as a working writer, putting out a total of 11 novels, two short fictions, three plays, 13 nonfiction, one article, and she co-authored seven children's books with one of her kids. In a 2012 interview for The Guardian, she boiled down this complicated job of being a parent into three key tasks. She said, their needs were simple. One, they needed me to be competent. Two, they wanted me to have a sense of humor. And three, they wanted me to be an adult. It doesn't get much simpler than that. And in this video, I talk about what it means to be competent when raising kids, the lessons humor provides for overwhelmed parents, and finally, what it looks like to be an adult in the household. So what does it mean to be a competent dad? Khalil Gibran, a Lebanese American philosopher and poet, wrote a collection of essays titled The Prophet. In the chapter on children, he beautifully captured the essence of loving and raising children. He wrote, your children are not your children. They are the sons and daughters of life's longing for itself. They come through you, but not from you. And though they are with you, yet belong not to you. Gibran's words resonate with the idea that children are individuals with their own paths to follow while still deserving your love and support. At its core, competent parenting is all about being there for your children in a positive and supportive way. It's about creating an environment where your child can grow, learn, and become their best self. It's about showing your child that you care, you respect them, and support them emotionally. Spend quality time with your child, listen to their stories, and share in their excitement and challenges. Your emotional connection creates a sense of security that helps them feel valued and understood. Effective communication is the secret sauce to make this work. Socrates once said, let us examine the question together, my friend. And if you can contradict anything I say, do so, and I will be persuaded. Socrates, uh, known for his Socratic method of questioning, believed in engaging in thoughtful conversations to stimulate critical thinking. His approach involved asking probing questions that encourage open dialogue. He believed in guiding students toward discovering knowledge on their own through discussion rather than simply imparting information. This method emphasizes the value of open communication through a back and forth dialogue. Nobody wants to be told what to do. The same goes for your children. Speak to your child with kindness and patience. Encourage them to talk about their thoughts and feelings. When they know you're listening, they're more likely to come to you when they need guidance or have questions. King Solomon was known as the wisest man who ever lived. When God asked him straight up what he wanted, his answer was an understanding heart. Not a Porsche or Tesla, but an understanding heart. What a guy. With the help of a few other people, the book of Proverbs was written mainly by King Solomon. He actually wrote the book for his son, Rehoboam. He offers some great advice for both kids and parents. Proverbs chapter 22 verse 6 is one I try to live by daily. Start children off on the way they should go and even when they are old they will not turn from it. Even though you are looking at a cute tiny little love grenade, you are raising a man or a woman. What you impart today should be relevant when they are grown up. To be a competent parent means letting your kids explore and make choices but also helping them understand limits. Boundaries provide a sense of structure and safety while allowing them to learn about responsibility and consequences. In today's busy world, giving your child your time and attention is priceless. A competent parent has no problem putting away distractions and being fully present. David Letterman was the king of late night. His shows ran for 33 seasons, making him the longest serving late night talk show host in the history of American television. At its peak, he was making something like 30 million a year. He was watched by an audience of many millions every week. In 2014, Letterman announced that he was hanging it all up. On the day he made the decision, Letterman went to his young son, whom he'd had later in life, with the news. He told Harry, I'm retiring. I won't be at work every day. My life is changing. Our lives will 
will change. Another cool example is NBA player uh, Ricky Rubio. He had no problem letting it be known publicly that he would be playing professional basketball for only a few more years. He said, when my son starts school, the NBA will not be worth it. I will have to go back to Spain. I don't want to make him dizzy moving him around when he's six years old. There will come a time when basketball will not be the priority. We think we need to keep piling up more money for our kids. Don't get me wrong, you need to provide, yes, but your kids need you to be present too. In Aziz Ansari's Netflix comedy special, he tells a joke about a conversation he had with uh, the musician Frank Ocean. Aziz asks how Frank Ocean gets away with only making music when he wants, only touring when he wants, and only doing the kinds of things he wants. Frank Ocean's reply was, it's not that hard. You just have to be comfortable making less money. What's it all worth if you don't even have a sensible relationship with your children? Competent parents understand that their kids might want a mountain bike or to have their college education paid off, but what they need is to be seen, to be understood, to be a priority. They need you to notice them, to hear what they're saying. They will appreciate the other stuff, but they will not forgive you for missing this. Being a parent is one thing no one else can do for you. No matter how much money you pay for your kids' Ivy League daycare, when you're absent, you leave a hole no one else can fill. When you're present, you give them a gift no one else can give. Inside each person is a combination of DNA that has never before and never will exist again. On top of that, each person's experiences, their interests, their unique moments in time, all of it adds up to something very, very unique. So when we encourage our children to be like everyone else, when we compare them to how other kids are doing, when we try to get them to do what other kids are doing, when we're concerned they don't fit in or that they stand out or that they're a little weird, that's the opposite of being a competent parent. In this day and age, if your kids are not a little weird, if they are well trained to follow orders like nice little factory workers, you should be worried. In Happy Birthday to You, Dr. Seuss reminds us of the stupidity toward the bias of sameness. That seems to be the norm these days. He says, today you're you. That is truer than true. There is no one alive who is youer than you. Every child is unique and things change fast as they grow. Parenting isn't a one size fits all journey. Competent parents adapt their approach and learn as they go. Don't be afraid to learn alongside your child or fall for the trap to get them to fit in. Being a competent parent is all about the little things you do every day that add up to create a loving and nurturing and supportive environment for your child. It's not about being perfect or having all the answers. It's about being there, showing love, setting a positive example and guiding them as they grow. And if you're looking for a cheat code to get there with ease, have a sense of humor. Parenting is a journey filled with ups and downs and having a sense of humor can be a game changer. While it might not be on the official list of parenting skills, a good laugh can make all the difference. Laughter can go a long way in building strong relationships and creating happy memories. The goal is not to become a stand-up comedian or constantly cracking jokes. It's about finding joy in everyday moments, embracing the funny side of challenges, and creating a playful environment. Parenting comes with its fair share of stress and tension, from temper tantrums to spilled milk. There are endless situations that can easily lead to frustration. Having a sense of humor allows you to step back, see the situation from a different angle, and respond with a smile instead of a sigh. A well-timed joke or a playful perspective can diffuse tension and make tough moments feel just a bit lighter. Laughter has a magical way of bringing people closer together. When you share a laugh with your child, you're not just sharing a moment of joy, you're building a stronger bond. Your child learns that you're approachable, relatable, and that you're someone they can turn to even when things get tough. It teaches your child that it's okay to stumble and make mistakes. Children learn by example, and having a sense of humor models a positive attitude toward life. When they see you handling challenges with a smile, they're more likely to adopt a similar outlook. Your positivity becomes a life lesson they'll carry with them into adulthood. Having a sense of humor in parenting is like adding a splash of color to a canvas. It transforms the ordinary into the extraordinary. It eases tensions, it strengthens bonds, and it creates lasting memories. By embracing humor, you're not just lightening the load of parenting, but also nurturing resilience, building connections, and teaching your child to find joy in all aspects of life. But be warned, this is not the end-all be-all of parenting. Your kids need you to be the adult in the house.
house. After the birth of my daughter, Vera, I knew I had to step my parenting game up. So looking around for resources on parenting, I ran into a book called Father Hunger by Douglas Wilson, which I highly recommend to any father or future father who is watching this. Wilson describes fatherlessness as a rat that is eating away at the modern soul. He points out that most families are starving for fathers, even if dad is physically around. And there's a huge cost to our children and our society because of it. One section of the book that really struck a chord for me was when Wilson mentions that men are much more important, crucial, and influential than they believe themselves to be. He says that it is the easiest thing in the world for a man to grow up, get married, have kids, and still think of himself the way he did when he was a boy. Just another dude hanging around the house, making messes, telling jokes, and eating the food, but not necessarily building a legacy, creating traditions, providing deep meaning and presence, and being a rock of protection, leadership, and vision for his family. Being a dad is a role of immense responsibility that requires adults to take the lead in guiding and nurturing their children. Being the adult in parenting doesn't just refer to your age, it signifies taking a mature, responsible, and wise approach to raising children. Robert Greene's 34th law from his book, The 48 Laws of Power, commands those who seek power, which you do by default once you become a father, to be royal in your own fashion, act like a king to be treated like one. Green explains, the way you carry yourself will often determine how you're treated. In the long run, appearing vulgar or common will make people disrespect you, for a king respects himself and inspires the sentiment in others. By acting regularly and confident of your powers, you make yourself seem destined to wear a crown. Put simply, being an adult in the household means leading by example. Be sober, be confident, and command respect if you plan to step up as the king of your family. Begin to act like an actual king. How does a king act? In Proverbs 31, 3 to 9, King Lamuel dictates to his son what it takes to be a true king. My son, the answer to my prayers, do not spend your strength on women, your vigor on those who ruin kings. It's not for the king to drink wine, not for rulers to crave beer, lest they drink and forget what has been decreed and deprive all the oppressed of their rights. Let beer be for those who are perishing, wine for those who are in anguish. Let them drink and forget their poverty and remember their misery no more. Speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves, for the rights of all who are destitute. Speak up and judge fairly. Defend the rights of the poor and needy. Do you need to quit being blackout drunk? Do you need to quit smoking weed and crashing on the couch at night? Do you need to start speaking up for what you know is right and become a full expression of your true authentic self rather than who you think the world expects you to be? Children learn by observing the behavior of adults around them. Being the adult in parenting involves modeling the values, behaviors, and attitudes you wish to instill in your child. Whether it's showing kindness, respect, responsibility, or honesty, your actions speak louder than words. Children in fatherless homes begin life at a significant significant disadvantage. More than 20 million children live in a home without a presence of a father. Millions more children have fathers who are physically present yet emotionally absent. The majority of prison inmates come from broken families and those broken families are most often fatherless families. Furthermore, when fathers are not present, something or someone has to take the place of the protector and provider. Sadly, in our modern world, it's often not the local church which is filled with with mentors stepping up to the plate to take care of the widows and fatherless, nor a grandparent or other loving family member. But instead, the government writes a check and assumes all will be well. In other words, fathers are not present, so government welfare has stepped in to replace the role of the father. Boys raised in such a home grow up without a rock, you know, a male leader, an adult that they can aspire to be like. So they too grow up, wash, rinse, and repeat a vicious cycle, going on into the world without a strong sense of responsibility, knocking up a few ladies of their own, producing more unwanted babies, and contributing to a continued cycle of aborted babies or fatherless homes. In his recent essay, Doug Wilson says, the reason why the streets of Chicago are filled with violence is fatherlessness. The reason why so many young people flock to the false allure of socialism is fatherlessness. The reason why there is massive contempt 
for institutions is fatherlessness. And the reason why our institutions have become so contemptible is fatherlessness. Being an adult is both a responsibility and a privilege. You become a guiding light, a role model, and a source of love and support for your child. As much as it can be challenging, embracing the role of the adult contributes to the well-being and success of both you and your child. And fortunately, you don't have to go at it alone. A complete manual for being a father that has been a great help and one I encourage any father feeling overwhelmed with this role is the Bible. The Bible teaches us a ton about being a father. As a matter of fact, fathers are so important in the Bible, beginning with God the Father, that the words father, fathers, and forefathers appear 1,573 times. Open it up and look around. You won't regret it. Thank you very much for spending your precious time with me today. And if you like this type of content, subscribe to my channel and hit the notification button so you don't miss when I post a new video. And also just to make sure the algorithm pushes this out to more people who can benefit from this. We're living in weird times, my friend, and our role as fathers is being portrayed in a light that puts fear in us instead of the growth and pride that comes from being a leader. Your job as a dad is pretty simple. Have your shit together. Be fun. Be responsible. Of course, simple doesn't mean easy, but it does give us a place to start. It also reminds us what doesn't matter. As Morrison would explain, the kids didn't care if I did my hair. They didn't care what I looked like. Whether you're broke or there's climate change or whatever else your fear may be, as long as you're present, there's some semblance of structure in the home and that they're safe. Your kids don't care about all the extra stuff. I'll see you on the next one.